Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more old world goodness. I'm going to be brutally honest with you, today was a struggle. My intention for today's video was not what I ended up doing and not what you've seen on the thumbnail. I actually intended to paint up my first Lizardman miniature for the old world and start that playlist off. And I got a lot of pressure to paint up them like my old Lizardman army, which was a purple scheme. Nicknamed Barney the Dinosaur by everyone around me. And I attempted it two different ways, one with contrast and one with normal paints. And it was a disaster. I had a miserable time trying to get any sort of tones that I enjoy. I definitely think Games Workshop is lacking in the purple department. I'm just not very comfortable with purples as a, as a whole. So I struggled with that for most of the day. And at the end, I just decided to flip the whole video on my head the whole day and just do something for me, something a little bit fun and something that has no real purpose. So that's where this awesome old school Bretonian jester comes in. He's actually a named character and I will talk a little bit more about his backstory in the video, video to come. But just know that sometimes if you're not having a good time painting miniatures, it's good to take a step back, put those miniatures aside and pick up something that you're excited by or something you think is gonna be fun or interesting just for the sake of it. This miniature has no rules in the old world. He's got no, he's, there's literally no use for him. Although I might stand him in as a unit champion for a man at arms just to put him on the table for a bit of fun, but that's not necessary all the time. So hopefully you guys can watch this video and just enjoy the process of painting this fun, old, characterful piece. And hopefully my joy of painting him does bleed through. Before I get into the video though, I just want to say a huge thank you for your, all your guys' support over the last couple of weeks. The video content has been blowing up ever since the old world has dropped. You guys are literally loving the content and I am more than happy to continue giving it to you. But... Having said that, I know a bunch of you guys are also signed up here because you want to see some 40k content and that is coming later in the week. This week we've got Age of Sigmar, Lord of the Rings, 40k, Age of Sigmar. We've got a whole lot going on this week. So if you're excited by all things Games Workshop, including a bunch of things 3D printed actually, then stick around and this week will be for you. All right guys, without further ado, let's jump in and uh, get painting a fun old Jester miniature. Okay, just to give you a sneak peek of my um, sorry excuse for an attempt at painting a purple Lizardman this morning. I literally got to this point, had it washed and layered, and I, I just couldn't decide on layer paints. I got frustrated. So I was like, nah, the hell with it. I'm going to paint something I want to paint. So Jules the Jester was what I pulled out of my bag of tricks to paint up and have a little bit of fun with. For anyone who doesn't know who this miniature is, he is quite an old miniature from the Games Workshop. He came as a, a set of two different miniatures. It was Tristan the Troubadour and Jules the Jester. They were kind of like a... It was like a buddy cop duo type character situation. Basically, Tristan the Troubadour was a, uh, a famed kind of musician and he would travel around the Bretonian area. And obviously for great banquets and stuff like that, he would play his lute and sing. He was considered to have quite a miraculous voice, but he was also no sledge in combat. He was a famed hero of Bretonia. And after he decided to give up the life of a Troubadour and go on his questing slash Grail Knight quest, trying to find the Lady and the Grail and become a Grail Knight and all that kind of just his trusty jester, Jules, begged him to go with him. And he did. And they did indeed travel the Bretonian lands for many, many years. And they would seek lodging in castles and stuff like that. And they would, you know, sing for their meals and participate like celebrities kind of traveling around for their board. And then they would obviously go out on crazy adventures and fight and kill and maim and do all sorts of awesome things as this kind of crazy duo. Now, unfortunately for me and my collection, uh, a very sad thing is I do not have a Tristan the Troubadour miniature. He is quite rare. Uh, he's quite expensive on things like eBay. And I don't want him as part of another set with the jewels. I already have my jewels. So I want another. I want a Tristan at some point. So at some stage, I will have to go and find one and to reunite him with his friend and use them in game. So as such, right now, he has no rules. The, the, the Jester obviously has no rules. Now, there is kind of Jesters in Men-at-Arms units and stuff like that. But I feel like it would kind of be a waste of such an awesome miniature to use him like that. So I was kind of racking my brain trying to figure out what I should use him as. And of course, I started to look to the Arcane Journal for Bretonians. And there's an entry in there for basically like a mercenary wizard. So traditionally in Bretonian armies, not even traditionally, just as a kind of devout rule... The only wizards are the, the damsels, basically the handmaidens of the lady, who have been visited by the lady and have been trained by the lady on how to use magic and all that kind of stuff. So there is no male wizards. Well, we do have the option for it now. So I thought a funny thing to do would be have Jules be a standard member of the Bretonian court, but he's actually a secret wizard. He doesn't want to be like 
divulge that he's a wizard to anybody else because it's usually frowned upon or even forbidden for uh, men to be wizards. So he will join the ranks of armies, kind of patter along doing his funny tricks on his wooden horse and, you know, waving around a balloon with some flags, but his other hand is actually casting crazy wuju spells, making units better, you know, fireballs out of his hand that people think are fireworks and all sorts of craziness to kind of blend in and trick everyone. So he is actually going to be quite a competent wizard. So I don't know whether I'm going to do anything crazy when he might just be like a fun little level one wizard. Just to, to uh, field him in armies at some stage. But I decided to go for the black and the red scheme, which is um, quite a large portion of my current Bretonian army is red and black. Obviously in my head, that Baron who mustered some forces to war brought the majority of the force there. Obviously Grand Knights are all different colors and Pegasus Knights actually belong to him, but... My Tunis Knight of the Realm are from different areas and different uh, noble houses and stuff, but my Baron brought this jester with him as part of his entourage. Like he brought the damsel and stuff, so perhaps the Baron even knows that this guy is going to be a little wizard and he plays along with the idea of him just being a silly jester. Knowing full well that he has a potent wizard and has helped him out on many of his crazy missions and wars and fights. And since he does help out so much, he's decided to leave him in the army and not to out him as a wizard. At least that's the crazy story that I've come up with so far. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think it'd be a little bit of fun to put him in as a wizard? Casting spells and being awesome. Obviously, he's a, a beautiful miniature. And with my uh, previous unfun purple times this morning it was really nice to go back to just these fun old school warhammer miniatures you know like it got to past one o'clock in the afternoon and i hadn't really like i was starting another new video which is just like there's just not enough time in the day to do that with any sort of modern miniature because there's just so much detail whereas with this guy i got broke out black red tan gold silver and i got to have this miniature base coated and washed in about half an hour threw some texture paste on let it dry and then started layering process so it was just such a nice thing to be able to get that much of a model done in such a short period of time and have these little characters i've got so many of these awesome old school warhammer characterful pieces to build and paint i think that's one of my favorite things about the old world is the concept that unlike an age of sigmar for instance if you buy a miniature that exact miniature has an exact profile he has an exact set of rules. Whereas in Warhammer, you buy a miniature, you're like, oh, this is a this is a hero of the Empire, or he can be a noble of the Empire, or he can be the It's like, okay, here's a wizard. Is he level one, two, three, or four? Well, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do. And what equipment does he have? What rules does he have? What and you just get to slot in these awesome character pieces into your collection and kind of use them the way you want to use them. And I just find that to be so cool. Something that I don't think I would have been able to do with this guy in Age of Sigmar. I don't actually remember where I got this particular guy from. I have a feeling I bought him off eBay a couple of years ago. And by a couple of years ago, I mean more than a couple of years ago. I'm glad I did, because now I get to paint him. And add another painted miniature to my painted Bretonian collection. I've said painted a lot there, but yeah, my shelf of painted Bretonian miniatures is actually growing quite uh, substantially now. It looks full. It looks like an army's worth of models, which is very cool to see. The model obviously takes a shade very well, all those old miniatures do. And after I've done the rest of the basing on the model, this is what he was looking like, and then I just got to start layering him. So for layering him, I just did my standard, a slightly brighter black, so Corvus Black is my go-to for layering black, as it's got a touch of grey to it. Very quick and easy paint to use. And then obviously the Baron that I'm going with, um, which has the axe motif, which I can never remember what the hell... Baron of Bloody Baron, or he's got a whole name, I can't remember. But the, the red is obviously quite a substantial symbol for them. So I'm going to spend some time and make the red really punchy on this miniature. So I'm going to go into uh, two stages of highlight for that. I'm going to go from a fist on red and then up into Evil Sun Scarlet and make it really nice and poppy. Since how the, the black is kind of dull, that's not really going to drag your attention all that much. Now as a model goes, think about him. He's got ribbons and a balloon in one hand and he's got a little hobby horse in the other. <laughs> so he's riding to war alongside that. So... So another thing you're not really going to get in Warhammer these days is these like kind of funny character from models. The only place you're going to get stuff like this is like the, the Christmas anniversary model kind of thing. No serious models are ever going to have that this kind of character. 
Do you guys have any crazy uh, kind of fan favorite miniatures from the old world or old Warhammer like this that really stand out to you? Things where you're just really happy you have that in your collection or you're really happy that it exists or something that you really want to own. I would love to know all of your bits and pieces. I own so many old Warhammer miniatures that if a bunch of them does show up, I could potentially do videos on them like I do with this. I am more than happy to kind of dig through my old collection. Like I'm planning on doing a Skaven video later in the week and I'm going to use the Games Day Skaven Warlord from like 2010, I think. Another beautiful model I've had on the back burner for so long. I do really enjoy Skaven. So getting a Skaven army up and running at some stage soon would be on my to-do list for sure. And maybe this Skaven Warlord will be the thing that'll push me over the edge into getting started with it. Although I do really want to try and base my entire Skaven army around Eshin as they are my favorite clan. I feel like it is the hardest clan to try and do an entire army around, but maybe I can maybe I can pull it off. We'll see. For anyone who is unaware, Eshin are the basically ninja assassin clan of on the Skaven. So you have an entire army of Master Splinter and you're kind of on the right path. Just adding a little bit of highlights to the hobby horse now. Which is kind of hard to do because he's got an eyeball and he started to paint him like he was actually a horse and then remembering that he's not an actual horse and... That was kind of weird. What the hell do you paint his eyeball? I don't know. I couldn't figure it out. So I just put a bit of black wash on it. Don't judge me. The Skaven miniature I'm planning to paint later in the week actually I realized today is... If you've all seen that new old Bretonian miniature they've shown off, the, the new lord that has the little squire holding his helmet. In the article for that particular miniature, they talked about the idea that this was going to be a Games Day miniature, but they decided to release a Skaven instead. So the Skaven I'm painting later in the week is actually the miniature they replaced that Bretonian lord with. The Skaven is nice, but I really want that Bretonian lord. Even though not a lot of people are making fun of his narrow face, but I think that's just a... A dodgy camera job and a dodgy paint job. I'm very excited to get my hands on that piece as well. Hopefully at some stage it will be released. No sign as to when yet, but uh, hopefully we're not left waiting too long. Using some Katachan flesh to highlight all the brown parts. And he's really started to pop, look like a cool little character. And this is another thing, I don't know what it is, but... Like if I bought a brand new box of miniatures now and I took them out and I built and painted them, I would feel good. I would feel good about myself, you know, that I got some cool hobby done and it's now, you know, on a shelf looking well. But there's something, at least to me, infinitely more enjoyable from digging through an old kind of bits box of cool old models that I own and taking out a model like this that I've owned for maybe 15 years. And that I'm like kept telling myself, oh, one day I get to paint it one day. Well, that day is finally here and this model is now finally painted. It's on a shelf. It's like, I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm thinking about how I'm going to use it in a game soon. And all that kind of stuff just, it just makes me happy. So yeah, that's, that's my thoughts. Maybe I'm a weirdo. One last highlight, I think, across his face. Bit of kids love flesh for the final highlight, just to kind of touch of the nose, top of the cheeks, some chin, and of course his weirdly shaped fingers. No one who sculpted back in the day was very good at sculpting fingers, so scuff, old fingered models, it's just, it's always a bit weird looking. But uh, we just make do with the best we can, just highlight around the knuckles. No matter how many sets of knuckles they have in the hands, because sometimes they get that wrong, I'm not even joking. And obviously finishing this guy off as maybe want the troubadour the other miniature that goes alongside him even more obviously is a, a named questing knight so it'd be kind of cool if you could lead my unit of questing knights so perhaps i may try and find one somewhere we shall see a bit of uh, lead belcher is used to highlight the gold baubles on his jingly armor as he jingles as he walks along, he's hiding his incantations and stuff as he's casting his crazy spells. And with those highlighted, that will bring an end to the painting process of this awesome miniature. Last thing to do is show off some still photos of what he will actually look like on the table. This is him, finished and complete. Like I said before, he's just a character for the little police. I found an excuse to use him in a game, and I am super excited to put him on the table and see what he looks like. Here he is, sat in a unit of men at arms, and um, yeah, I'm really pleased. 
Okay, guys, and there we have it. Jules Le Jongleur is indeed painted up and uh, ready for my shelf of painted Bretonians. If you guys are in my Patreon, you will know that I released a video showcasing my old world shelves. Um, and the fact that I have two Bretonian shelves, one Bretonian shelf is all the stuff I plan on painting that's kind of built and getting rebased. And then one shelf of the stuff that I've finished painting so far, like the shelf that I'm kind of proud of. So it's nice whenever I can add uh, even a single model like this, that shelf, a couple times a week really is helping to grow that collection. If that's the kind of thing you're interested in seeing, I like I said, that is a video on my Patreon. My Patreons do get an extra video every single week and access to a private Discord server. And it's just two of the awesome benefits for being involved. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to help support the channel, keep the lights on, the cameras rolling, then check that out in the description below. Everybody else, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give the video a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below, and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. And if you're interested in pushing the channel further again, think about subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any future updates. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one.